your people to share a word with them. Lord, we ask you again tonight to come into our midst and sup with us. Guide us in the way that you would have us to go, that you might get the glory, the honor, and the praise. In all ways, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would continue to save those who are not saved. Give them a mind to seek you out before it's everlasting too late. And we might share in this right to the tree of life that we have in Jesus, our Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We're so glad to see you again tonight. This is my final night with you. I had have two nights, and then we're going to be in the hands of my friend, very capable minister, Leonard Harris. And we want you all to come out and support him and be in prayer for him. This is a great undertaking, and we want to make sure that we that we encourage those who have to stand and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Last night, we talked about the fact that we were in a revival. And I said to you last night that I would ask you again, why are we here and what happened to us? Again tonight, we want to share with you that a revival is a specific period of increased spiritual interest or renewal in the life of a congregation. Revivals are seen as a restoration of the church itself to a vital and fervent relationship with God after a period of decline. Last night we talked about Moses. He represents a type of Christ. Reason why he was a type of Christ is because God was not ready to bring where we are tonight in Luke chapter 1. So until the fullness of time, God used different individuals who represented a different aspect or a different type of Christ. Last night, we talked about Moses who was on a mountaintop, even in a burning bush. Tonight, God has moved from the mountaintop into the womb of a virgin. He can move any way he chooses. He can select anyone at any time. And we have tonight the story of the ages, which still uh, uh, troubles many folk. Because as we said tonight, we heard it taught to us about the spirit of God. And I don't think we appreciate the fact that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so tonight, we want to go to Luke chapter 1 as we are continuing to talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus, talking about just say yes. What we want to understand about Mary is that she is a mother of promise or prophecy, if you will. And it's important to understand that when God calls you, it's already been decided. This is all a part of God's will, and he uh, uh, unveils his purposes to us when he is ready to unveil them. And so uh, what's new to Mary is not new to God. She was already selected in his mind, in his plan, in his will. She just did not know that when God met her through the angel Gabriel to reveal to her, and that's a term that 
that, that, that we want to really appreciate. Uh, this is God revealing his purpose. This is another great area for the church because we have a problem with revelation or inspiration. Uh, when I was a child, they talked about being unctioned by the Holy Spirit. But you have to, if you're going to be purposeful in the body of Christ, there needs to be a revelation of that purpose. I don't preach messages based on what I feel. Am I making sense? It needs to be by God revealed to me what he wants. There are 66 books. I would have a difficult time trying to decide which book I should use. But the beautiful part about that, I don't have to trifle with messages. All I have to do is say, God, what do you want Say. And it's his job to tell me what he wants me to say. So I'm in attendance like you, and I'm expecting him to tell me as I go through this, and then I will transmit that information to you. Am I making sense? Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, 38, I'm sorry, we're going to lift some points out of this, as someone said tonight, we need something for today. In the 26th verse of the first chapter of Luke, in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth. Now, picture this in your mind. Here's God sitting on the throne. Angels everywhere around him. Servants to do his bidding. And he says, Gabriel, I got an assignment for you. I want you to go down. And I want you to visit this woman. Sometimes, let me say this about a revelation. God will move in your spirit. Am I making sense? He will move in your mind. So, the angel Gabriel comes down to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her, keep that in mind, and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. We were talking about tonight how specific purposes can be. And the issues surrounding God saying something, as he could come in tonight, if I can use uh, 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 John here. And the Lord will come in and say something to him and not say anything to his wife. Sometimes I don't tell believers what God tells me. Born that late. The reason why, because folk will mess with the purpose. And you know how we do if I was you. So I keep my mouth shut. And I process what the Lord is saying to me. Just so you know, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be because it's in her spirit. 
and she hears it just like I'm talking to you. But the angel said to her, don't, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You ought to feel real special about being a disciple of Jesus Christ. God didn't have to choose you, but Romans 8 said, uh, uh, those who God foreknew, he predestined. I like that. That makes me feel good. I'm at a point, if I can just step away, I'm at a point in my life. I have never been at more peace in my life than I have been serving the Lord. I finally got something that is purposeful. And it fits to a T. I spent years wandering around, wondering how I should live, doing what I wanted to do until God came in and made a decision for me. Isn't that beautiful? So I want you to feel, don't, don't just look at this and say, well, you know, that's Mary. No, think about you. You are somebody to God. Don't be afraid. You found favor. You didn't do anything. Huh? I like that. I haven't done anything to deserve the grace that God has bestowed upon me. I haven't earned anything. I was a sinner just like everybody else. Did a lot of damnable things just like everybody else. But when God was ready to reveal to me that I had a purpose, you know what I love about God when he calls you? He just calls your mess too. And I love this about him. He just cleans us up. Grace will do that for you. You will be with child. Hmm. And give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. When God starts telling you things, huh? however bizarre it might sound to you, believe what he says. Because if you start playing with this thing, that's, that's what happened to us. Society looked at this story and said, you know what? That, that this can't be possible. God would never come to you and tell you anything if he was not able to bring it to pass. Keep that in mind. It's just a matter of time, Sharon. If he's going to do something and he's told you, it's just a matter of time. Don't get in a hurry. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will never end. Whatever God has put in you, purposeful, it will make an impact. Before I came to this church, let, let's just, let me just put you there. 
I knew that it would be a time that I would have to come here because the Lord put me to sleep and put the sanctuary before me sitting in it. Am I making sense? I had never come to this church, but in the spirit I had been to this church. Is that a problem for the believer? So all I had to do was wait until the appointed time. And as I sat in the sanctuary, looking back to the stained glass, I said, that's exactly the way he showed it to me. And the Lord, all right. This is a great thing that we have in our lives that we take too lightly. Huh? God chose you, watched you come into this world in sin and left you till he was ready for you. And now you running around like you've been doing this all your life. This is going to be something great in Mary's life. She says, how will this be? A lot of folk will tell you, you know, that they trust God. If I were to ask that question, hand would go up all over the place. But until you get in a position where you can't control it, you have a better understanding of trust. So she doesn't understand. And that's all right. Huh? Sometimes when the Lord show you something, you have to wait for interpretation, which is a gift. And sometimes we make the mistake and let, let me just give you an example. Sometimes we think call me sick. <laughs> call me call. Sick me sick. Just because the Lord says come, he also has to say go. And some folk have come into the ministry moving too fast. Didn't wait on God. Am I making sense? Mary asked the angel, Sis, I'm a virgin. Hmm. That's the only thing I understand. Huh? According to my knowledge, it takes a man and a woman to bring a child. Yeah. But with God, nothing is impossible. I don't know what the Lord is going to do in your life. And you might be at your wit's end because you don't think that it could happen. When you look at your situation, there had been a time I couldn't rub two nickels together because I was afraid they would disappear. But somehow the Lord made a way. When I didn't have a dime, sometimes you read the Bible and you don't even understand it. Huh? Do you know how many times I preached and didn't know what I was getting ready to do with that thing? Sometimes when you study and live, you sit there at that table, huh? Till your head fall over in the book, but when you walk away, you don't understand. But by and by, so I don't get in a hurry about these 66 books, huh? It hasn't been given to me yet to master all of them. Some folk just sit down and they just go in the Bible. Ask the Lord where you should go. Oh, yeah. Still talking about Jesus here. 
this revelation. Verse 35, the angel answered the Holy Spirit. Huh? He will come up on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. I don't know if we remember uh, 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 back over in Acts 2. You know, the church didn't come into to fruition until the Holy Ghost came. Sometimes we try to have it without him. You ain't going to be able to have it. You're going to go through the motions. But we need him. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child. Huh? In her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her six months. You know what I love about God? He gives you stuff when you can handle it. Sometimes we'll go in prayer and ask God to, to let us see something and then when he show it to you, you get mad. Don't go there with it. If you're not prepared for that because he knows. Even Jesus said to the disciples, he said, I have much more to say to you. But you cannot bear it. Huh? So she doesn't know how the Holy Spirit is going to do this through her. And then the Lord drops another bomb shape. Verse 37 For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. It's good to agree. Even sometimes that thing that the Lord revealed to me, it breaks my heart. Because sometimes it involves folk that are close to me. And I don't want anything to happen to them. So I try to tell them things about God so they understand. This is not a God you want to play with. But I have to accept his will. And one of the things that has changed about me over the years is my prayer life. When I first got saved, I talked a lot. You know that hour thing we do? But as I have uh, 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 matured in this thing, I'm more of a listener now than a talker. And I pray just like everybody else. But I stopped trying to talk to God about so many different things that I didn't understand and I let him reveal to me. We need to understand God's will for us. We don't, you don't even hear too much about that these days. But somebody said tonight, two things you need to know as a believer. Why are you on this earth? And the second thing you need to know, are you about that? And if you're not, you need to find that out. A couple of things I want to lift from here and I'll close out. Mary agreed her response to the angel Gabriel. Uh, she had a spirit of humility, a personal quality in which an individual shows dependence on God. This is what we have to understand. He brings it to pass, whatever he wants to do. He guides us. We have to uh, rely on him to show us how he wants things to be done. And respect for other persons. What God desires most is not outward sacrifices, but a humble spirit. Such a humble spirit shows itself in several ways. Number one, 
a recognition of one's sinfulness before a holy God. I said that to you earlier. God didn't have to use me. All of the years, that it, it, just, just one of the vices, all of the years of, of alcoholism, you had to know I did an unspeakable nerve damage to my body. But when God saved me, he fixed up my nervous system. He rewired me in the Lord all right. They used to tell us growing up, say, he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Number two, obedience to God. You know, I, I love this, and, and I know Mary appreciates this, and, and you should too as a believer. Uh, uh, you know, when God wants to do something in your life, I was thinking about this earlier, I get free wisdom. I get free knowledge. I get free understanding. I get free preparation. I get free instruction. That's something good to know. It's all because of his will yeah. Yeah. that we get these things that fit in line with his purpose. The second thing is submission. This is something that we really have to hit home with. Subject yourself, surrender, submit to the almighty God took some time for me to learn that I wasn't created to do my thing, but I was created for his purpose. It took some time for me to understand that. Submitting to the authority of co or control of another. So since the Holy Ghost is mentioned, it's important to understand that Mary says yes to being controlled. Yeah. Mm. We don't like that word. If God, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you should be under control, not out of control. which is in accordance to the will of God. And I'm going to tell you something about the Holy Ghost. He'll break you. Huh? Until he gets you to understand that God is running this thing. Mary says yes to the will of God, even though she doesn't fully understand God's method or purpose. We don't fully understand. Huh? We don't fully appreciate what he wants to do. God will tell you to go somewhere, but, but then once you get over there, then he'll start guiding you on what he wants you to do, who he wants you to interact with. Some of you I didn't know at all before I came here. But God put me here so we can make contact with one another. Am I making sense? Mary says yes to the grace of God apportioned to her, not envious of someone else. That's very important. Don't be envious. Huh? Don't be mad because God uses Barry huh? differently the way that he uses Flint. Huh? And, and if they were to shake hands, they gift wouldn't rub off on the other. You know, they used to say that years ago. If they got close enough to you, they thought they could rub that anointing off of you. It doesn't work like that. What God has for him is for him. What God has for him is for him. Now, they ought to be able to work in concert with one another that God might get the glory out of both of them. 
Am I making sense? Because yeah. there's a lot of strife and contention. I used to tell the Sunday school class years ago, listen, everybody's name is not going to blink in light. Huh? And sometimes we come in the ministry wanting our name to blink in light. But somebody's going to have to go in the gutter. Some bishops don't want to get touched with no dirt because I'm a bishop. But the Bible says it's a work. Don't be envious. Huh? Don't be mad. Huh? Don't talk about somebody else. Huh? Because God uses them in a different way. I told them, uh, I, I, I mentioned it to you all, but I, I, I got in a lot of trouble when God called me over here. Huh? Some folk are still mad at me, John. That bothered me, Clint, for some time. Some folk are not speaking to me anymore. Huh? Because I'm doing what God told me to do. Huh? I didn't have to, and I don't lie on the Holy Spirit. So I said in an effort to make peace, Let's just see what happens. We got a little time. But I had to make a decision. We were talking about that earlier, about the cost of what God may want to do in your life. Yeah. Huh? That'll tear up your relationship that you've been accustomed to over the years. But when everybody gets done with this, I got to do what he said. Huh? Because I belong to him. Lastly, Mary says yes to praising God for all he has done. I'm not going to read it tonight, but if you continue on, Luke chapter 1 Verse 46 through 56, she got about the business of praising God, and that's all I want to do. My purpose gives God the glory, the honor, and the praise, and I understand that. So when I do what he tells me to do, God gets the glory, and I'm thankful for that. Huh? I'm happy about that, yeah. that when he's pleased, I can have some peace. Because keep in mind, you might say, well, you all are, are you a minister, but I minister to him before I minister to you. And I have to face him about the mail that I have to deliver. It makes sense. I hope, trust, and pray that we've given you something to think about through this story. So many points could be made, and there were some excellent points made tonight about Mary, but as we said earlier, you need to know your purpose in this life. And I encourage you, if you don't know what the Lord has for you in your secret closet, you need to go in there. Huh? And you need to ask God, and, 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 when, and when you do that, you got to listen now, so you got to be quiet. So when he starts telling you that, what he wants you to do, then you know he's going to equip you for that purpose. Mary has the character now of God, her Savior, our Savior, in her belly. You and I have been filled with the whole Holy Ghost. Huh? <laughs> and I
and our character has to conform to what, what we say is in us that God may get the glory. I hope, trust, and pray that you have been encouraged two nights that I'm with you. As I said, Minister Harris is going to take us further into this revival, into this vacation Bible school, that we might be the better. And I, I just hope, as I stay around Pleasant Green, I hope we grow in love for one another. I still see some things that I'm not comfortable with. Huh? And that is a concern because you're saying you're saved. When we were reading earlier about Mary's respect for authority and then other folks encompasses other believers. And we have to be respectful of one another. We have to love one another. This God gets the glory out of that, of our fellowship and love for one another. Let's work on our attitudes toward one another. I'm going to make it sense. Sometimes we want to do this thing that the Lord has called us to do. But listen, you got to love me. Bible didn't say nothing about liking me. But it said we ought to love one another. And we ought to be about that, that we might be the better for it. So again, we want to ask tonight if there's someone here that does not know Christ and the pardon of their sin, we want to invite you to come. We want you to remember that you too have a purpose in this life. 